In this section, we're going to be solving problems using a binomial method. The binomial method requires that your problem fits a binomial distribution, and there's four requirements to satisfy that. The first thing is that the problem you're working on has a fixed number of trials. So a fixed number of trials basically means you perform the task a set number of times. The key with that and what that means is then you stop. After you've performed your fixed number of trials, you don't look any further whether you got the outcome you wanted or not. So for example, draw three marbles. You're told to reach into a bucket, pull three marbles out, and that's it. Whether you wanted them all to be the same color or different colors, you stop. Answer eight questions. You have a test and you're told to answer eight questions and then stop. Whether you got them all right or none of them right, you stop. An example of something that wouldn't satisfy the requirement of a fixed number of trials is pick M&Ms until you get five green. The problem here is if I was asked to pick M&Ms until I get five green. If the first couple aren't green, I'm going to keep going, and I might have to pick seven or eight M&Ms until five of them are green. And you might have to pick 10, 15, 20 of them until you get five that are green. And since we've all stopped picking M&Ms at a different point, that does not classify as a fixed number of trials. The second requirement for being binomial is to have two outcomes. And we define two outcomes as success and failure. So an event that doesn't have two outcomes would just need to be redefined. If we were wondering if you got your phone call during day or night, black or white, two outcomes were set. But for example, rolling a die, singular for dice, is there's six sides on a die. And so we can't say, did you roll the dice success, you know, we're looking for a specific thing. We need to change it to rolling a four on a die. Then if you roll it and get a four, we'll mark success. If you get a one, a five, a two, a six, we would mark failure. And be careful because success doesn't have to be a positive thing. Think about the flu. I don't want to get the flu, but if you were looking to see if somebody had the flu, you would mark success. They have the flu. The next thing that we need to look at is the concept of independent trials. And this is defined as one trial does not affect the next. So, for example, sampling with replacement, or don't forget, there are cases where you can sample without replacement. So long as your sample size is 5% or smaller, we can treat it as a without, a with replacement problem. And then the very fourth thing that we need to happen so that we can satisfy all requirements of a binomial distribution is constant probability. The probability does not change over time. So for example, if you were taking a multiple choice test and it was always four options for each question, and you were guessing, you always have a one in four chance of being right. But an example of something that does not meet constant probability would be a test that is half multiple choice and half true-false. In this case, when you're guessing on the first half of the test, you may have a one in four chance of being right, but as you go to guess on the second half of the test, you have a one in two chance of being right, a much higher chance of being right, so a different probability than you had before, so you do not have constant probability. Let's finish this up by looking at a couple problems and seeing if they fit the four requirements of a binomial distribution. So in question one, where we're taking 20 M&Ms out of a bag that contained 50 M&Ms and writing down whether we picked a red or not, we look at all of the different requirements. Fixed number of trials. Did we have that here? Yes, we picked 20 M&Ms and stopped. 
Next thing we look at, two outcomes. Were there two outcomes? Yes. Success, we got a red. Failure, it was any color but a red. Next thing we look at, independent trials. Were drawing M&Ms independent? No, not in this case, since we were picking from a bag of 50 M&Ms without replacement, our sample size wasn't large and small enough, sorry, it wasn't small enough, and we weren't replacing the M&Ms, or we have to assume that we weren't, so we're going to assume that independent trials weren't satisfied. What about constant probability? Did we have that here? Yes, M&M color stays the same, so the probability of picking a red M&M stays the same in the sense that there were the set amount of red M&Ms. Therefore, problem one did not have independent trials. Now let's look at problem two. Fixed number of trials, first thing to look at. We're watching cars pull into a parking lot until we record the seventh car that pulls in as an SUV. Is that a fixed number of trials? No, it's unknown how many cars we're gonna have to watch pull into the parking lot until we hit that seventh SUV. So we could be there all day, all month, or two minutes. We don't have a point where we say stop, we've looked at everything we're gonna look at. What about two outcomes? Did we have that here? Yeah, success is a car is an SUV, failure is it's any other type of car. What about independent trials? Does that happen here? Yes because one car does not affect another. Just because you're pulling in with a sports car doesn't make the car behind you change what type of car it is. And the last one we always wanna check for is constant probability, and that is did the probability change over time? Well, no, we do have constant probability. Car types do not change, they're set. So let me have you work on the next two. Let's finish that one off. It was not a fixed number of trials was our problem. Let me have you look at the next two, and we'll discuss those in class.